After all these years away, though, I asked Paul, why now? Uh, mainly just because during the making of our latest album, Flowers in the Dirt, uh, we, we formed into a band. Instead of just musicians making an album, we started to sort of hang out a bit together and started to tell silly jokes to each other. Started to enjoy being in each other's company. And so then it was like, well, great, you know, if we can have this much fun, let's go on tour. Fans seem to be so hungry to see you and be a part of it and to feel that music. Do you um, feel that from the audience? The, the show affects people in different ways. I mean, we've seen like a lot of sort of people crying during the show or necking or... I mean, it's quite emotional, you know. Oh, it's great to see that from the stage because you figure, oh, they're having a good time, you know. And you see little kids on dad's shoulders and stuff. Um, the other night in Chicago, I saw a couple of old ladies. I mean, they were not young. This was like Blue Rinse generation. <laughs> but it, it's fabulous, you know. They're totally into it, like the Golden Girls, like the old one. You know. <laughs> um, so, you know, it, it is magic. During your past tours, there have been times when you tried to ignore your Beatle legacy. But on this tour, you've embraced it, as well mm. as your Wings legacy. How is that for you singing some songs that you've never even sang on stage before? That's, that's really great. That's one of the su most surprising things about the tour for me, because we rehearsed the stuff. I couldn't quite work out why it was feeling so good, except, oh, I just like these songs, you know. And I suddenly realized with Hey Jude, we just did it once. We got the take, put it on our record and walked away from it. And so it was really just a choice for me of either never doing those songs again because of some pain half remembered from the past sometime, or just getting with it and just thinking, hell, this is my material. Uh, what are we doing here? You know, I, this is some of my best stuff. I should sing it. Recently, the Beatles' legal differences with your record company were settled. After the suit was settled, you mentioned there was a chance that you and Ringo and George would get together in a couple of days after you said that George said, let sleeping dogs lie. Do you think there's a chance you could convince him? Or how do you feel about his response to what you said? Um, I don't know. You know, I didn't know he had all those dogs. You know, he, he probably he must have a lot of them. He's probably in his house. He's, well, now, none of us can have, we can't have a Beatles reunion because John is not there. And that would, it's the only way a Beatles reunion would have been with John. So the minute John died, that put out any question of a Beatles reunion. What I think is possible, though, is that there's a film that we've been playing around with, which would be like the definitive sort of story of the Beatles. Now, it might be nice to have some new music for that. It'd be dead easy to do. And we'd, we'd start to play together for that. I'm not sure whether George is against that. I don't think he would be against that. We've also talked about he and I might write together, which we've never done. Um, I wrote most of the stuff with John and even one with Ringo, but I never actually got round to writing with George. Um, so that might be an interesting possibility. You know, and from there, you know, we might find that we enjoy it and we might do a little bit of stuff together. It won't be a business reunion, though. It'll be a three-quarters reunion.